Welcome to the vCloud Automation Center demo, requesting new cloud services. During this demo, we're going to show you the user self-service experience of how they go about requesting new cloud services. First, we will provide you with an overview of the vCloud Automation Center self-service portal. Then we are going to show you how to request a new compute resource by examining three different types of provisioning examples. Once the request process is complete, we'll show you how to monitor the status of your request. This is the vCloud Automation Center self-service dashboard. Users can quickly see the status of their resources as well as create new requests or manage their existing resources. In this demo, we will focus on the process of creating a new request. But before we get started, let's review a few concepts of how administrative policies limit what services I'm allowed to provision. The vCloud Automation Center administrator creates service blueprints which define the policies of how a cloud service will be provisioned and managed throughout its life. These blueprint policies are very granular, allowing administrators to offer services unique to each business as well as users within the same group. A vCloud Automation Center user can only request the services or blueprints that the administrator has made available to them. In this demo, we are only going to show you the request approval and provisioning process. So let's get back to the demo. A user can initiate a new request by clicking the New Request button at the top of the self-service portal. I am currently logged in as CNL Dev, and these are the unique services that are available to me and their relative cost. For our first example, let's provision a Windows 2008 server running on Hyper-V. To do that, I click the link of the name of the service. As part of the request process, I can see the default configuration of the services I have selected. In this case, the administrator made the blueprint very prescriptive. I have no control over the quantity of resources or their service level. The only control I have is over the number of machines that I can provision, and even that is limited by the blueprint's policies. I can also add some descriptive text here at the bottom. Finally, I can review the cost summary before submitting the request. Using the My Machines view, I can now observe the delivery status of this machine. Since the machine's blueprint policies are very prescriptive, there is no need for manual approvals and the provisioning process starts immediately. In addition to this ongoing status display, I will also receive email notification when the provisioning process is complete. Next we are going to provision a SUSE Linux machine, whose policies give me some freedom over the duration of the lease period as well as the resources that I can select. So for our example, let's make some changes to the lease duration as well as the amount of CPU and memory resources that we are going to allocate to this system before we actually submit it. From the My Machines view, I can see that by requesting resources above the approval thresholds, I've triggered an approval workflow which must complete before the machine is provisioned. I can check on the status of the approval by looking at My Pending Requests finding the requests, and then looking at the details to see who's next in the approval process. Next, we will look at the process for executing a multi-machine service request. We will provision AutoBuild Ecom Test Platform, which is a multi-machine service. As you can see, the request process is similar to a single machine request. But since the process is a bit more complex, there is a wizard that walks you through it. In the first step, I enter the lease period, any descriptive information, as well as the cost center of the service I am requesting. In step two, I get to modify the resource attributes of the multi-machine service that I am requesting within the threshold specified by the administrator. I can adjust the number of machines of each type. I can also adjust the compute resources of each machine by selecting small and large or custom configurations. If I select custom configurations, I can choose the exact amount of resources I want within the min-max thresholds. In step three, I can specify custom properties for each machine type. Finally, in step four, I can confirm my requested configuration and review the costs. Once I am satisfied, I can click Finish to execute the request. Once a multi-machine service has been provisioned, you will receive an email notification that the process has been completed. You will now be able to manage the service as a single entity 
or each machine in the service as an individual component. However, that is a topic for our next video. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We hope that it was informative. To learn more about vCloud Automation Center, there are additional videos available.